So I've been debugging the sales page with a Stripe API checkout using RuCode on Visual Studio Code. And I'm really liking RuCode, so I thought I would make another video about RuCode, just showing you how it works in the scope of debugging. As you can see here, I have the page right here. You can see my error, fail to create checkout session. You got my browser console over here. And you got my terminal running the local Next.js project on port 5173. And then we got the RuCode agent here. I've got it connected to Claude Sonnet 4 uh, through Anthropic. And I'm really enjoying a few things. So first off, you got these different modes. You got the coder, which obviously codes. The architect, which makes more of like plans ask, ask a questions, and then debug, and then the orchestrator, which I haven't even used the orchestrator yet. And if you don't know what it does, you just go here to edit, and then you can see the orchestrator's mode. So the definition, a strategic workflow orchestrator who coordinates complex tasks by delegating them to appropriate specialized modes. You have a comprehensive understanding of each mode's capabilities and limitations. Okay, breaking down problems to discrete tasks, when to use multi-step projects that require coordination across different specialties. Okay, that probably is for something far more advanced than what we're working on here, but I've been using debug because like I said, I've got this Stripe API checkout and it's just been cool having these different ro roles on RuCode because on cursor, you kind of just have to have a, a system prompt there and you would just change it or change your profile based on what you were doing. And anyway, I just like the interface here. I'm not a coder. So the real thing that I really like these IDEs, the integrated development environments for, is for organizing projects, which I did in a recent video where I worked on these course materials and then turned it into the sales page that I'm actually debugging now and you can check that out. But really, if you're trying to use AI to create things, to create products, to create information in different presentation modes, I guess. I really like this IDE interface. That's my point here. So I am actually debugging code though today. And I just wanted to show you a little more of root code. And okay, so it's asking me, okay, it doesn't have access to my environmental variables file. That's normal. So let's see, it wants to run the command. Now I have auto approve more or less everything is approved you can just toggle them on and off and i have max requests unlimited which is cool on cursor it's limited to 25 and honestly i don't know maybe you can change that on cursor i never saw a setting for it but here wow okay so it's using its own little browser that's neat oh wow yeah so i pulled it up it's the same thing i got over here it pulled it up wow so it's using web vision here and we can see up here in Ru code this is the total context length the context window so if if i showed you on cursor here real quick if we open a if we open a cursor window you can see in cloud force on at max mode you have a 200,000 context window and in normal mode you have 120,000 context window by comparison gemini in the normal mode has 120,000, but in max mode has a million. So this could become very helpful with bigger projects or really longer conversations. And the longer the conversation goes, the more context uh, the agent has based on what you've been working on. And that's, in my experience, it means the more time before you go through what we're calling death spirals, where everything you do in, it could be in bolt, lovable, and replit, like the conversation window of time has just run out. And so anything you do just doesn't help. You're kind of like going backwards. So all that to say, in RuCode, it shows you where you're at in your conversation context window and how much it's costing you. I think that is super helpful for just remaining more sustainable in your vibe coding because it's easy to get lost. I mean, on Cursor, I already racked up a bill for like over $100 for half a month, for two weeks. So I think this helps us be a bit more responsible too, which means we're gonna become more efficient because we're gonna become more cost-effective. So I think that's just an important kind of principle. 
So now it's asking, do I have my Superbase project credentials? <clears throat> oh, so we just figured out the problem, which is really silly of me, but, uh, and I didn't copy over the environmental variables, so I don't even have anything here. So let me do that off the screen. Okay, cool. So I shut off the dev server and we're kind of squished in here. So we run npm run dev again with the environmental variables in the project now, which is so silly of me. And let's secure the spot. Okay. Okay. Well, something's happening. All right. So now we've got, okay. Payment is not allowed in this document. It's not allowed to run in an iframe. Please re redirect to checkout at the top level. So we copy that and we go in here and I'm just going to start a new conversation because something else was going on there. Pop that in there. Let's see what it does. Now it's, this is another thing I like. Do you want me to direct redirect, replace the current page with Stripe checkout recommended by Stripe open a new tab. Yeah, I want to do that one. So I like being able to just choose. I don't have to type it, but if I do want to type something else, I just click this little right button and then it pops in the option there and I can keep writing. I can say, but also do yada, 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 yada. All right. So now it's sending another one where we got 18 cents in this one. You get plenty of requests with cursor, but for some reason, if I'm not using Sonnet Max in cursor, if I'm not in max mode using, it just, it doesn't seem to get as much done. I mean, look, this is clearly max mode because we have 200,000 token context limit, right? Context window. But here in, if we're not in max mode, this is built per token, which should just be just like this. So I don't know. I feel like I might just be paying cursor an extra 20 a month and we can see how much we're getting done with just cents here. So, uh, interesting to think about now, this isn't happening the way I want it to. I don't want it to go to the Stripe page. What does this look like? Yeah, this is just a checkout page. I don't even have to integrate Stripe to do that. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do because I want to just have a modal well, kind of like that, but I want to just have a modal, like a pop-up. And I feel like that's better for sales as well. Cause you can keep more information there. Yeah. I could literally just have put a link to the Stripe payment link here. And then why would I need bolt? Why would I need uh cursor root code? Why would I need, why would I need AI? So uh, that's a little, feels a little defeated, defeating there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close. I'm going to, I got to stop this guy over here. Come on. How do I stop? Cancel. Okay. Terminate. Okay. Uh, control C is to stop the development server and whoop. And then I'm going to put git add period and git commit. We're going to say stripe redirect fix and get push. So that's staging all the files, making a new commit and sending it to GitHub. So like at least if nothing else, this works, it goes to the sales page, but now I am going to change it to use a modal. And just in case it takes too long or doesn't work, I am going to just revert back to this very commit I just made if I need to. Otherwise, I'll just do this and then commit it and then it'll be what I want. I want the Stripe checkout to be a pop-up modal on the web page. It can't be an iframe, so it must be a form that then uses Stripe API super base edge functions to process upon submit. Okay, that's all. We're already using super base edge super base edge functions, even though it's not necessary the way it did this, which is kind of hilarious, but we have the Superbase edge functions in there. We're using the Stripe API already. We may as well 
make it the most optimal sales page it can be, right? Look at this. Sam Cart is a very well-known and respected like uh, checkout service. So you can just put things on your page like the way you want. Embedded checkout. So you can just put a checkout on your page like this. And there's templates and it's awesome. But look how much it costs. It's $79 a month. Then if you're paying $20 for cursor, suddenly you're not really feeling, uh, <laughs> you know, that cursor is so expensive. $79 a month for an embedded checkout when look, I'm at 18 cents so far using RuCode and the Anthropic API. Food for thought. So here we are again. I wonder if it's going to start its own, own browser here. Yep. Love it. Okay. So we got, we were in debug mode It figured it all out and it made a plan essentially. So now we go back into code mode, proceed with implementing the model based, the modal based payment form. There we go. And I'm going to get up and walk away while my AI agent does some work for me. <laughs> so this is really cool. I love that operator worker in there. Test mode. Dude, there it is. Now, I probably want to clean up the design and I will do that. But hey, this is exactly what I wanted. We'll work on it. Check out RuCode. It's open source. It's free. You'll save $20 a month. You'll be supporting the open source world, which I think is pretty important. $1.66. Can't get a better price than that to put a whole feature, like change everything around in your app. That's pretty crazy. So see you in a new video.